<clears throat> if I can ask David, are um, the people that are on at the moment are yes. mostly are they agents or are you buying properties or what's the what's um, their status? We've got some people from South Africa interested in buying some agents yeah, and uh, some some buyers. So we've got a mixture of, of, of people that are interested, some buyers and some agents. Um, right. Yeah, there's a mixture of people. Some some right. from the UK, some... Uh, you, Uris, where are you from? Uris? I'm from, I'm from Latvia. Ah, Latvia, okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, are you a buyer? Are you an agent? Uh, both. <laughs> uh, good stuff. Excellent. Welcome. Welcome to the okay. to the uh, chat. Um, the best uh, way f best way for an agent to learn is to um, be a buyer themselves. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Isabella is joining us. I think she's from Poland. Hi, Isabella. Yeah, I'm not an agent. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cliff's not an agent. Chip. Cliff is from China. Cliff's an yeah. old friend of mine, he was in school with me. Um, he's a very intelligent young man. He was in school with me, so he's still young. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Yeah, that's from primary school, eh? Primary school, yes. <laughs> yeah. um, welcome, Isabella. Thank you for joining us. Isabella is from Poland. She's looking to yes. buy. Hello. Welcome, everyone. Nice to meet you. Thank you, Isabella. We, we welcome you here. Okay, I think we, we can get started. I'm just going to introduce myself. Thank you for stopping over to watch the webinar uh, about the five mistakes to avoid when buying a property on the Costa del Sol in La Cala de Mija, Spain. It it's actually applies to, to, to Spain, uh, more specifically the Andalusian area. Um, <clears throat> A quick introduction about me. I've been in the real estate industry for over 25 years and I have the opportunity to be trained in South Africa where the industry is highly regulated and has an above average standard of training. Once you've, um, once you've, you've li been licensed in South Africa, you are subjected to a continuous professional development, which goes over three year cycles. Um, my real estate professional designation is currently a master practitioner in real estate, MPRE. I'm trained as a mechanical engineer and in the, spent some time in the financial world as a financial advisor as well, before settling down in the real estate environment. Um, currently, I'm located in La Cala de Mijas in Spain on the Costa del Sol. My company is One Vision Properties at Keller Williams in Marbella. Uh, as a professional, I always look to add professional value to my value proposition. And hence today I've invited Campbell Ferguson, which is a professional chartered valuer, to address the subject that we are covering today. There are many mistakes one can make when buying a property, uh, here in Spain especially, and there's a process one should follow uh, from the time you decide to buy, uh, from selecting the agent to work with, the property you purchase, uh, entering into a reservation agreement, very important, and then doing your due diligence from there, signing the actual offer to purchase after that, signing the deeds, getting the keys, taking occupation and everything in between. Now Campbell will be covering one aspect of this and that is essentially under the due diligence and falls under the technical inspection. And as Campbell said to me yesterday, there are more than five things to avoid. Um, and he'll cover that. Um, I have done a graph that illustrates the whole process. Um, and if you would like a copy of that graph, you can drop me a message or mail me at david.enslin at kwspain.es. I'll repeat that. Uh, david.enslin at kwspain.es. And then I'll get that to you. Okay, now uh, let's go over to Campbell. Campbell, I can take over, and you can you can uh, launch your your whole thing for us. Thank you, Campbell. Okay, thank you, David. Um, welcome to everyone. Uh, pleased to see you all. 
I, I've been down here um, for well, it'll be 20 years from the first of um, on the first of November this year. Um, so fair time. And um, I'm a chartered surveyor, Royal Institution of Chartered Surveyors. Um, I qualified a long time ago, um, even more than um, David's uh, primary school, I would have thought. But um, I've worked in property all my life, um, commercial property mostly in the UK, and, and um, uh, residential property ever since coming here. So it's 20 years of, of experience of property um, in Spain. I, I'd worked in Madrid for two and a half years, um, about 30 years ago, um, but uh, and that was good experience. But um, down here, it's um, it's different. As they say, Spain is different, and Andalusia is different, is even more different. So Costa del Sol. Um, and Cala de Mijas. Um, Cala de Mijas is um, located, it's between Marbella and Malaga city. And um, it's, uh, Mijas is a lovely mountain town and Cala de Mijas is uh, on the beach, uh, Mijas Costa um, uh, area. I, the, the, uh, regarding things to avoid is uh, the costa is um, uh, one of the ones um, which can be difficult. Um, being close to the sea, uh, you get a lot of salt air, uh, you get a lot of humidity. Um, so it can, properties there can experience rust. It just means you've got a higher um, maintenance costs and running costs and you've just got to make sure that uh, the house is kept as dry as possible. Um, otherwise um, you get dampness and condensation in the house. Um, I should say that as well as being a registered volume, I'm also a building surveyor, so that um, uh, Survey Spain, which is my company, um, and the, the website is um, Survey Spain, that's um, with one S in the middle, uh, dot com. And um, we, it, it's, we've created a network of surveyors so we can cover all properties, basically from the Portuguese Algarve, all the way around the costas to the French border, um, uh, Barcelona and up there, um, Alicante and so on. Plus, um, uh, we have experience in Gibraltar and uh, Andorra. And I think that's the lot. Um, well, there's all the islands of Spain as well, of course, uh, the Balearics and the Canary Islands that we have people there um, as well. So, yes, back to um, uh, Cala de Mijas. It's, it's a very attractive place. I was asking one of uh, my guys, building surveyor, who lives in Cala Honda, which is just beside it. And he was, um, what he said was, um, it's a really nice area to live in, not too far from Malaga and the airport, about 30 minutes, not too far from Marbella, um, not in the middle of a large town or a city like Fuenjirola, but with all the commodities close by. Uh, the beaches in the area don't get too crowded as there's no um, great big hotels and there's usually parking. You can't, now when I, I read that I thought parking in uh, Mijas, but as he pointed out there's the ferry ground on the far side of the, the, um, the coastal highway and um, that's usually, if it's not full with camper vans, um, that's usually uh, um, a good place to park. You've got a wee bit of a walk down to the beach, but um, uh, most people survive that. So as a place, it works very well. It's got lots of restaurants, lots of bars, um, lots of other facilities, lots of estate agents, um, and so on. It's got supermarkets, um, whatever. So that's the promo for um, Cala de Mijas. Uh, we know it well. We've been surveying properties there, well, all the time we've been here. and. Um, one thing I would say at the moment is there's quite a high, quite a large supply of property. There always is a, a good supply of property there. So it's better not to get too hung up on a particular house. If for one reason or another, it can't, it's just not the one for you. There are others around. So it's not a matter of um, uh, going daft on one particular property. Um, always look around and uh, be, be sensible about it, be prudent about it. Um, and if it's not working out either financially or for other reasons, you can find something else. 
Um, however, if you do find somewhere there, there's a fairly good chance you're going to be able to, if you that soon, you need, um, that you'll be able to sell it again. Um, because there, as I say, there's, there's quite a number of properties there, but there's also quite a, a big demand because of all the benefits um, of the area. So um, I certainly, uh, it, it's one of the things that my, um, my wife or family has lived down in the, in the Costa del Sol for about 30 odd years, and they were based in Estepona. Um, I came, as usual, you'll find with most people here, there's a woman involved somewhere, um, or a man involved, that people are coming down, either running away from them or coming down to find them. But um, I came down here um, with my wife, when she was my girlfriend, and we, um, we, we set up in Estepona uh, because her family was here. But um, in looking at it, I've often thought that Mikas really is the ideal place because you're far enough from um, Malaga to be, um, without a, uh, to be away from that. You're away from the airport, you don't have planes. Um, skipping, the, skipping the rooftops. Um, you've got the train in Fuengirola um, that can take you into uh, the city of Malaga very quickly. Uh, so you've got all sorts of things. You've got the, the coastal highway. Um, the road system in Spain is excellent. Um, that uh, it really is um, very good. Sorry, I'm just letting somebody else in. Um, it's really very good. And I other things against, uh, which I'm just reading the title again, mistakes you can make. Um, as I say, that they, they, it's just not getting too hung up on a particular property. Um, there's always other ones out there. But um, it's uh, the prices of um, Cala de Mijas, they're not ridiculous, once again, because there's a, a, good, um, a good supply. Um, the coastal thing is the uh, right down your frontline coast is something that I would certainly be concerned about um, in the long term. That the, the climate crisis and all that sort of thing, they say that storms are going to get stronger and whatever. Um, and it's everything's lovely during the summer, but you've got to remember that house is going to be there um, 12 months of the year. And hopefully you can be there for that length of time or for certainly good parts of it. So just to be sensible um, about things. Um, can't really think of terribly much else um, at the moment. The, there's lots of Campbell, um, sorry. specific things. Yeah. Campbell, um, in your surveys, you were mentioning um, things that you, you came across when you were doing your technical inspections, um, yep. things that, that, that concerned you. Um, uh, sometimes the lack of um, uh, occupation, first occupation certificates, um, and and uh, the the damp the damp issues that you often find, um, uh, yep. the construction issues, uh, that kind of thing. Could you perhaps touch on that for us a little bit? Well, yes. The um, I if. Costa del Sol, people ask us, well, what's the most common fault you find? And it's always damp. Um, as I've mentioned, really close to the coast, you're going to get damp, uh, really close to the beach. Um, but in other places, you'll find that the, the builders, they tend to build very quickly. They build, the, most of the time, it, it's, it's very well done. We very, very rarely do we find structural faults, except maybe if it's an older property. Um, the, uh, it's damp is what's done because when they build the things, they tend to just slap on um, some bitumen paint on the outside, especially of basements, and uh, often you get damp coming through there, um, which is a real shame because if they could spend another day or, or so um, and a small number of euros doing things properly in the outside when they're constructing it, they could stop, stop an awful lot of grief. The other thing is that um, Many properties don't have guttering and downpipes. So it means that when it rains, as we've got to admit, it does now and again, um, it's, uh, all that rain hit, comes on the roof and then pours down right beside, right at the side of the building. So of course, it's going to saturate the ground there and you're going to get damp, uh, possibly coming through at that point. 
So you've just got to be very careful um, with those uh, with those things and check for damp all the time. Um, you can cure it um, by well, various methods, um, but first of all, you've got to know that it's there, and it always costs you something to to do it. Um, even if um, a property is um, has got no um, constructional damp problems, sometimes there can have been a flood in the house or something like that. And with the tiling, um, most properties have tiling floors. Um, that they, that's set on a bed of sand or, or whatever. Once the damp gets, water gets into that area, it can take literally years to come out of it unless you lift the floor um, and cut back the, the wall plaster. If you do that, lift the floor, cut back the wall plaster, leave it for maybe a couple of months to dry out, then um, put everything back again and that'll be fine. If you just leave it, you're always going to have damp coming up the walls for the next three, four years, something like that, as it's the only means of escape for the water. It just gets sucked up the walls. So that's, um, that's that side of it. Thanks, um, Campbell. Um, what is the worst case scenario that you have found um, with, with inspections? Have you ever come across an inspection where you've had to Tell, uh, during the due diligence where you've had to go back to the buyer and say look this is not um, worth the price you're paying and you need to perhaps go back to the seller and, and reduce the price has that ever happened well it's yes um, that quite often that uh, as we say to our clients that um, our surveys are going to cost you money um, but often you'll get that money back many times over with the defects that we find. Uh, you're there, therefore able to discuss them with the owner and um, uh, get a discount on the price, much more than our fee, uh, which if they hadn't gone ahead, they'd have gone on to buy and then discovered the, the costs of these things. So um, that's one way, but uh, equally we do have in our reports that um, many agents do take these things into account and have um, discounted the price already. They've managed to persuade the owner um, that, look, your house is not 100% perfect. Um, you, there's this, that and the other, so therefore we, you know, you've got to be prepared to discount when these things are discovered. So it's not, um, usually it's, it's not a complete surprise to anyone um, when we do find things. And um, that's, yes, I think, uh, is there anything else that you want me to say on that? Um, do you, are you finding that you're doing the oh yeah. um, inspection during the reservation contact due diligence? Or are you doing this uh, on instruction of the seller? Are you doing this on instruction of the potential buyer? It's 99% um, is uh, the buyer, and they always come too late. Um, they put down their, their deposit, um, a five or 6,000 holding deposit, and then they think, well, maybe we should get a survey. But of course, the clock's ticking by that time. Um, and uh, the, there's uh, not much time for us. But we usually manage to fit it in. Um, for for people, so that it, it's it works out um, that that they are are able to get in there. Uh, the timing of it, once we get instructed, once we get we know we can get into the property, um, we give a, a report uh, 24, 48 hours after we've been in it. That's just a very brief headline report, and then the full report will maybe come four or five days after that. Um, with it having been prepared by the surveyor, um, which is sometimes me, but most times somebody else, um, um, that, that then comes to me, I review it and sign it and it's sent on. Uh, everything is my responsibility. What I normally do is when, to, to, to those who don't know how the process works, what we do is, um, when we find a property that the, the buyer likes, we have to now do a reservation contact, which means we need to take the property off the market. And at that stage, the buyer needs to make uh, um, a deposit to show their intent. So what I do with the reservation contract is I make sure that the terms are very, very clear. 
and and those terms need to be that this property will come off the market and it's subject to a due diligence and in that due diligence it has to be proven that there will be a valuation or a uh, a, a report done by somebody like uh, Campbell and it will be subject to a successful report of of, of, of Campbell and if it, that report is not successful then the deal has to be renegotiated or either cancelled so um, and the deposit is refundable always and and the deposit will be held by a third party lawyer that is not uh, the the seller's lawyer so it's always somebody that is not um, part of the deal so that uh, the, the the seller cannot uh, manipulate the lawyer to 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 withhold the money and that's always very very important because it protects in the buyer um and and the buyer can then get get out of the deal if there's a very negative scenario and that's very important to remember because you don't want to be going into a transaction where where there's a lot of problems with with the property and and you cannot negotiate the price to 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 deal with the problem or negotiate in a way that you can get out of the transaction so that you do not end up with a problem. So th that's a very, very important thing to do. And, and you, you deal with that in the reservation contract before you actually get the offer finalized uh, and signed at, at the notary. Because once you make the offer at the notary, that's it. You have to then pay your full deposit, the full 10%. And, and, and once you're in there, that's it. You, you, you're tied in the transaction and there's not much more you can do because you've had a chance now to, to look at the property and and there's no backing out at that stage so you try to get everything sorted out in the reservation agreement and make sure that that you've dotted your your i's and crossed your t's at that stage so it's a very important thing and and that's why you need to have a professional uh, agent dealing with you and and many many buyers don't understand the importance of of, of having a, a, a an experienced agent protecting their interests at that stage so that's important campbell Yep, I can agree with uh, wholeheartedly, David, that um, if there's a responsible agent involved, um, it uh, gives confidence to both the seller and the, the buyer. Yep. Uh, often um, the seller is the one that's perhaps most nervous because they know this is their big deal. And often, um, often for them, this is their life savings or um, whatever, so that uh, they sometimes let's put it that way their moral uh, compass goes slightly awry and they will do things that um, uh, they shouldn't be doing uh, but the, a responsible agent will be able to guide both parties and um, to be able to get a deal that is fair to both parties um, and that's uh, very important i also as i should point out that um, many times we uh, we carry out the survey and um, the, the client or the client has come to us and said, there's cracking here, there's this there, there's that there, and we're really concerned about it. And often we can go back to them and say, well, yes, you, you, you did see that, but it's not something to lose sleep over. Um, it'll cost you a small amount to um, redecorate perhaps or whatever, but you were going to be doing that anyway. So it's nothing exceptional. It's not that the house is going to slide down the hillside or anything like that. So uh, we do provide reassurance on many, many occasions, um, as well as uh, pointing out the defects. So it's, um, it's not all bad news um, that we provide. In fact, most of it is, um, is pretty good news. The other thing we, we do with our building surveys, uh, we compare um, the nota simply which is the title description, an extract from the title description. We compare that to the catastral, which is the tax description of the property. And uh, we compare that to our measurements of the property. And uh, very often, I would say 80% of the time, there is a variation between these three, um, with often the variation being on uh, our measurements being larger than the other two, because areas have been included uh, that um, haven't been registered. Um, maybe somebody's brought in a terrace uh, as part of the main building or they've added something to it. Many of them, they, they have all the licenses, they have all the permissions, but they just haven't gone to the registrar 
and uh, added that on because going to the registrar will cost you a thousand euros um, just across the doorstep. So and the people tend to wait until the property is being sold and then we'll sort everything out on the paperwork side, which is, it we pointed out, the answers are given and then everybody's happy. Um, the catastral we're finding, it's the one that all the taxes are based on. Um, uh, the, your annual tax, um, which is the EB as it's called, the impuestos, um, I can't remember what it all is. Um, I, that that um, is important because obviously if they get that wrong, the sizes of that wrong, and sometimes we've seen it that that is much larger than um, is in fact uh, correct. So we, um, we can point that out and uh, people get a topographer, which is um, a, a Spanish land surveyor um, who will come out and measure all, out all the property um, in a certified way that the courts and everybody will accept. So, um, does, that, does that lead to a real taxation for the seller? Can that hold up a transaction? It, well, it depends on how um, our advice would be usually if it's something that is a major problem, um, it, it's, it's got to be sorted out. And the seller and the agent should have identified this beforehand um, and uh, had that sorted out so that uh, the property is clean and ready to be sold. Um, if, if it's not, yes, it can take time. The catastral, getting that sorted out, very often can take a year, year and a half or whatever. Um, so it's often that is just, well, everybody knows what the information is. It's just a matter of going through the bureaucracy um, and getting that sorted out. So um, that one's skipped over. But it's really, it is certainly so much better to get the, um, the title accurate when, uh, when the sale goes out. If there are any questions that you might have, any more information that you require, please feel free to contact me at david.enslin at kwspain.es. That would be david.enslin at kwspain.es. And I will be having regular webinars similar to this. Uh, my next webinar will be on Thursday, 21st of October at 4 p.m. and all my webinars will be saved to YouTube and you can follow me on my YouTube channel which is One Vision Properties and um, it will all be interesting subjects similar to this uh, if there are any subjects that you would like me to uh, future let me know and I will gladly cover those subjects for you but thank you very much for watching i appreciate it and um, i hope this is of some value to you have a wonderful day thank you <laughs>